Sugar Ray Robinson is widely regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer of all time. With his slick footwork and terrifying punches, Robinson was incredibly dangerous. You could write an entire book about Robinson's techniques, but for this video, we'll be breaking down his legendary punching power. When Robinson decided to go for a knockout, he would load up his hand far behind his body. Usually if a fighter throws a swing, it's because they don't know how to punch properly. But Robinson swung to build up speed, and then turned it into a tight, well-structured punch at the last second. He used the weight of his body to pull his hand forward, keeping his arm loose and fast until the last moment. This is what's happening when you see his shoulder catch and then whip forward. He did this down the length of his entire kinetic chain, each movement adding momentum to the next. Legs to hips, to shoulder, to elbow. This is known in kinesiology as the stretch shorten cycle, where you gain power by stretching out the muscle and then releasing the tension, like pulling and then letting go of a rubber band. So how did Robinson get away with telegraphing his punches so much? Part of it was his speed, and part of it was his habit of changing his target mid-punch. He would load up low and go high, or load up high and go low. A wide haymaker could turn into a linear cross halfway through. Reacting to the wrong punch is a mistake that you just couldn't get away with when you were fighting Sugar Ray. Like Tyson says, it's the punches you don't see that knock you out. From a physics standpoint, bending his arms at the last possible moment quickly shortened the arc of his punch's trajectory. This means his punch got much faster right before making contact, like the way a tether ball spins faster after it loses rope. Accelerating into your target is one of the most important components of a knockout punch. It's the reason that almost every martial arts ends his punches with some kind of twist or snap. Whether it's from the wrist, shoulder, or in Robinson's case, his elbow. Keep in mind if attempting this kind of power punching that a shorter, more linear punch will always hit first, and Robinson threw these punches just as often. By shifting his weight and timing his body perfectly, Robinson was able to leverage most of his weight through his target. By making contact just before the midway point of his arc, Ray ensured the most possible force behind his fist as it landed. This constant weight shifting from foot to foot combined with his superb balance made Robinson incredibly mobile while punching. It was rare to ever see a strike where he was not up on one foot or jumping through the air. A stable base generally means more power but less mobility, but the last thing Robinson needed to worry about was power. He often leaped into his hooks and swung his back foot out on crosses, landing in a superior position a good deal of the time. Subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date on new videos as they come out. We have another video planned for Muhammad Ali, who was actually greatly influenced by Robinson, and more MMA fighters like GSP. Until next time, this is David from The Modern Martial Artist, wishing you happy training.